possible. So uh, I do apologize if maybe some of these are already uh, t you know, out there, but or maybe if you agree or disagree with this listing, make sure to comment down below. Maybe with uh, your own picks, I'd love to know. You can do all of them. You can do one of them. You can do the most controversial one. But uh, yeah, and yeah. Subscribe to the channel for all the the randomness I post on this channel. And uh, yeah, also just give a like on the video just to show some support. To liking the video is the best thing.
as the second seed, and they are looking almost like a championship caliber team this year, which again, no one even probably had them, maybe top nine, maybe, in the West starting at the year, and uh, it's really cool to see what he has done, and also the rest of the group of guys, so I think the team of the year, you could even say award, would be Memphis, the coach of the year, Taylor Jenkins. Next up, uh, maybe one of the more easier awards, we have the sixth man, sixth man of the year award, the nominee. Scotty Barnes of the Toronto Raptors, Cade Cunningham 
uh, nearly a steal, two blocks a game. It's 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 a toss up. This is really 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 tough, and I think it's really down to two for me. No offense to Kate Cunningham, I love his game. He's going to be an all star probably <laughs> a m m vast majority of his NBA career, and he already looks like a star player. Just need to build the team a little bit better, and I think the Pistons and also Kate Cunningham will just even look even better. But definitely Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes is a toss up. Maybe it'll, <laughs> maybe they'll be co rookie of the year. I think that'd be pretty sick. If back to, to Grand Hill and Jason Kidd when they won go rookie of the year but if that can happen which I wish it would that'd be amazing um man I guess I'll just probably give like my prediction on this I think Evan Mobley will win the award I don't know why I just have a feeling that's my prediction now would I rather have Scotty Barnes win it again in the most literal sense? I don't care. Either one can win, and I will be so happy for either one. I just think that everyone else will vote for Evan Mobley. Again, the, the Cleveland Cavalier team were a very underrated team this year, and even though they did have their ups and downs, ups and downs, and then obviously coming out of the playoffs, kind of, well, not coming out of, falling out of the playoff spot, losing their eight seed rights to the Atlanta Hawks. I kind of feel bad for them. <laughs> I feel like that Cleveland Cavalier team deserves some sort of recognition for their sort of hard work this year. I think maybe even their head coach maybe should have gotten sort of a nod for Coach of the Year because he did a very good job. I can't even remember who it is, but whoever it is, I think deserves how that well that team played. Um, and honestly, that team would be in a be way better spot if Jared Allen was healthier. So even with Jared Allen, they're starting big men out. I think Evan Mobley really stepped up to that starting big man role for that team, so maybe that's also sort of leaning towards him a little bit. Uh, Scotty Barnes has been solid this entire year, and so that's another really good case for him, but if you're asking me my guess who I think is going to win, I think Evan Mobley will win. If Scotty Barnes wins, that would be amazing as well. Next up, we have most improved player, or MIP. MIP, 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 MIP. Most improved player. Uh, we have nominees of Darius Garland from, again, the Cleveland Cavaliers. We have Ja Morant from the Memphis Grizzlies. And then we also have DeJounte Murray from the San Antonio Spurs as a nominee. All very exciting. Now the biggest sort of thing is that A, Jordan Bull left off the list. I can kind of see why because he was starting this entire year. He started all of last season. You could really see how he was going to perform a lot, obviously with coming off of, you know, two starting years, just getting better and better and better, getting more and more of a chance. Um, with Clay Thompson being out, that is why. Maybe that's why he's not on the listing. I don't know why he didn't get that many votes, but Jordan Poole should, probably should be on the list. Tyrese Maxey of the 76ers, again, a player sort of in the same sort of area with injury. Well, injury, if you want to call it that, with Ben Simmons being out and being the starting point guard for the Philadelphia 76ers. I think he probably should have been on the listing as well. And also, Desmond Bain from the Memphis Grizzlies, also a way standout player this year when John Morant was out. Desmond Bain was the guy for this team and really helped sort of carry the load while John Morant was out with injury. Even Jaron Jackson Jr. was out. Desmond Bain really stepped up, so three guys I think very notably should have been in there. And also, uh, my boy, Anthony Simons. Sure, it was only for a handful of weeks, maybe a couple months, where Anthony Simons was putting up 20 plus point per games, good, good looking numbers for him assist as well, pretty much taking over a Damian Little role. Um, I feel like he should have gotten some nods, at least more conversation, but probably not on the list, but I just want to talk about him. Uh, but out of those three guys, Garland, Jaw, DeJounte Murray, very hard award to give out. You know, most improved can be a lot of things. It could be the literal sense of most improved on how a player is actually improving statistically. And then there's most improved on how a player improves his game, his worth ethic, how much he improved his team as well. But if you're going to ask me who I think is going to win it, I think probably the most popular player on the, on the ballot, and also maybe, maybe a top three, top five most, you know, popular player in the NPR now, John Morant. I think John Morant will win the award. Do I think he deserves it? That's a different discussion. Now, John Morant last season averaged 19 points per game. He's this season averaging 20 
seven points per game. He has the highest point increase out of everyone on the listing. So yes, literally, he is the most improved in that sort of sense. But you cannot tell me we all saw John Morant being at this level at some point in time in his career. At least I did. Maybe I'm only talking to myself here, but I think we all knew that John was going to be a superstar type of player. So is it really that surprising that he's improving like this? No. So that's why I kind of I kind of don't want to vote for him because, well, that's why I wouldn't have voted for him if I did have a vote. But he is literally improved the most. His team has improved the most. And again, popularity, John Morant is, is a god in the NBA right now. He's super popular. And I love watching him play. He's probably also the most exciting player in the NBA. You could definitely argue so. Will he win? Yes. Would I have voted for him? No. But I think he is very much deserving. And again, it's a toss-up if any one of them three win. That's awesome, but I think it's probably going to go to job. And we have the last award of the night, the MVP. We have the nominees of Giannis Antetokounmpo, Antetokounmpo, Antetokounmpo of the Bucks, Joel Embiid of the 76ers, and Nicole Jokic of the Denver Nuggets. And again, I'm going to repeat myself. I don't care. I don't care who wins. Every single player, very much deserving. Every single player has their own arguments. All the player stats are stupidly outrageous. This is probably the closest MVP race we have ever had ever in NBA history. Because not only did these three players, there's players like LeBron, Kevin Durant, um, even Steph Curry had an argument early on in the season. Who else? Some people were even talking about John Morant being MVP at one point in time in the season. Like there, there's maybe DeMar DeRozan, Luka Doncic. There's so many players in the NBA that have just been balling out. But this is a good no offense to Giannis. I love Giannis. And I think he, his best case was definitely at the end of the year when he was on that great one with the Bucks and putting up some crazy stat lines as well. I think his sort of argument to be in the MVP conversation wasn't really that loud, if I'm being completely honest. If I'm, you know, going off the media and the media's sort of take on this, it's a two-man race of Joel Embiid. And Nicole Jokic, and I love Giannis. Giannis could win this. That'd be awesome. Would be a three-time MVP, which is insane to think about. But I think it's going to be Jokic and Embiid down the stretch, and it's going to be close. And again, I don't care who wins. <laughs> I really don't care who wins. Oh, man, this is going to be tough, man. But you know what? Again, uh, well, actually, let's go stats first. We have Nicole Jokic averaging 27 points per game, 14 rebounds, 8 assists on a team that had no one else. They have their next best player being uh, Aaron Gordon, maybe, Monte Morris, maybe, um, which is pretty surprising. Then you have Joel Embiid averaging 31 points per game, 12 rebounds, and 4 assists with having, you know, back then, Ben Simmons, Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris, but not having James Harden on his squad. Like, that is just insane talent built around Joel Embiid, but also how much load he still has to carry with having those many great players on his team. It's interesting to see the sort of dynamics of these two players, but if you're going to ask me who I think is going to win, which again, this is a prediction video, I think the NBA, the players, the coaching, I think some of them will vote for Jokic as well, and I think it will be very close, but I think it, Joel Embiid will come out on top. Yes, I think Joel Embiid will win the MVP, but if I had a vote, I would have voted for Nicole Jokic, and again, I'm going to the literal sense like I did with most improved, um, most valuable, and if you take Embiid off that team, and it was a team of Harden, Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, and some sort of a good starting center in the NBA, that team would probably be maybe in the exact same place it would be right now without Joel Embiid. That's my hot take. It might be a little spicy, but hey, that's that's what I think. Um, Tyrese Maxey, again, definitely maybe should have been on the ballot for most improved player. Put up a 40-point bomb in the playoffs. Absolutely insane. Even Tobias Harris can go off. Obviously, James Harden is a great player. Joel Embiid has great teammates, but he also carries such a heavy load. It's in 
insane how well he still plays, which is really cool to see, but Nikola Jokic has nothing, and he's putting up great numbers, great assist. If Nikola Jokic isn't on the Denver Nuggets, that team is picking top three in this upcoming NBA draft. I would